How you doing, everybody? Hey, that's good. good morning. Uh, I just want to say that it's a, it's a privilege to be here and to be able to, uh, to share the Word of God with you. It's something that I don't take lightly, and uh, just to be able to stand here in this, in this place and to be able to open the Word of God and share what God has laid on my heart with you here this morning is uh, definitely a privilege, and uh, I thank... Uh, Pastor, Pastor Bill Bramblett uh, for inviting the Fellowship Baptist Church here, for inviting us to come over here all the way to Brisbane. It's uh, been a while since I've been back here, and, uh, uh, but it's also uh, uh, it's been, uh, been a wonderful time that I've had so far uh, meeting you all, uh, especially uh, some, of our, uh, some, some of my mob here from uh, Sherberg, uh, families and all that living here. And... Uh, God bless each and every one of you, and I hope that uh, this isn't my last trip for a few more years after this. I hope to come back and see us again. But uh, uh, before I go on, I suppose I'll share just, a, just briefly a bit about myself with you all. I'm one of five brothers. Uh, I'm right in the middle of them all, two in front of me and two behind me, and uh, I'm the shortest one of them all. They're all big fellas. They're all bigger than me. Yeah. So... Um, uh, don't know what happened there. We all grew up in the same household. Uh, but um, God is good. I grew up with the parents who knew about the Lord Jesus Christ. I grew up in what you would call a Christian home. And I thank God that I had parents who opened the word of God and showed me in there that uh, despite the fact that uh, you know, I might have thought I was on my way to heaven, that I still needed a saviour. And I needed to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and saviour. So uh, I thank God for them. I thank God for my mother and father. They too grew up in uh, Christian homes. Uh, over, the, over the West there, uh, quite a lot of our people have been well evangelised. Uh, however, there is a need for uh, churches, uh, men, and, men and women of God, to go out there and to be able to show uh, a lot of our people, our Aboriginal people, the right way. There's a lot of, lot of, uh, lot of different denominations, a lot of different... Uh, uh, followers of different belief systems that have gone out there and they're, they're really confuse, uh, confusing the people. So uh, I do uh, appreciate your prayers, uh, not only for our mob over there, but right across Australia. Uh, you know, we, we live in a, in a country where, uh, you know, it's indigenous people are uh, actually eight to nine times more likely to die uh, than, the, than our, our non-indigenous brothers and sisters. Uh, if that doesn't wake us up and show us that we need to go out there and tell these folks about the Lord Jesus Christ, then I don't know what else will. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, I pray that uh, God uh, stir you up just as well as myself and many others, uh, because if there's one thing that the people in this world need, whether you're Aboriginal or non-Aboriginal, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only answer and he's the only way. So uh, I thank God for that. Uh, grew up in Kalgoorlie, that's where we're from. Calgary sort of been in the spotlight over the last couple of years uh, for some bad things, but there's some wonderful things that's happening there. And, uh, for example, the, word, the, the work of God that's going on there. Uh, we have a youth group that is very, I guess you could say, is very healthy. Uh, teenagers, 12 years old and up, we get about uh, 60, 60, maybe 65 young people that come along, and uh, that number sometimes it jumps, you know, maybe over the holidays. And... Uh, if there's one thing that we can invest in our young children, it should be the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So I uh, thank God that uh, you know, the work is going strong. Our pastor's been with us for about nine and a half years now, and I thank the Lord for him and uh, just the work that uh, you know, he's, uh, God is leading him and guiding him, uh, and he's uh, doing a wonderful, wonderful work there with our people uh, in Kalgoorlie, Boulder. But uh, anyway, uh, without further ado, we'll get started here this morning. Uh, turn with me, if you please, to uh, the book of 1 Kings, uh, chapter 18. Some of you might be already familiar with uh, the story uh, contained in, in the Word of God. They're not just stories or fairy tales, amen. These are, these are actual events that took place, and uh, thank God for His Word and what's contained therein it's for... Uh, Definitely for our benefit, for our, for our benefit. First Kings chapter 18, I want to read from verse 17 through to 24. 
and verse 17 says, oh, I hope I pass it. How long do I have you this morning? About another 10 minutes? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Chapter 18, verse 17. It says, And it came to pass, when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, this is talking about Elijah, Elijah responded to him, he said, I, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel under Mount Carmel, and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together under Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks. And let them choose one bullock for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on wood and put no fire under. And I will dress the other bullock and lay it on wood and put no fire under. And call ye on the name of your gods and I will call on the name of the Lord and the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Let us pray before we continue on any further here this morning. Father God, Lord, I want to say at this time that you are a great God and only with you all things are possible. And Lord, without you, Lord, we can't do anything. Lord, there's quite a few people, Lord, who are present here this morning, who have come here, Lord, seeking a word from you. Lord, not from me, but from you and your word. I just ask and pray that you use me, Lord, as your instrument to share your word here this morning with your people. Heavenly Father, there are those who, are, who may be outside of Christ here this morning. Those who may have, uh, may have heard this message, may have heard a gospel message before. But Father God, I do ask and pray that, Lord, whoever these peoples are, Lord, or the individual here this morning, if they didn't come here with Jesus, I pray that they'll definitely be leaving with you. Father God, I ask and pray that they will come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour here this morning. Lord, I pray that you'll give us ears that will hear your word, a mind that will understand, but more importantly, a heart that will be receptive unto your word and apply it unto our lives. Father God, we love you, and Lord... Without you, we would be nothing. So, Lord, we commit the rest of our service, Lord, and this time here to you. In the name of your Son, our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I just want to read those verses uh, again. I don't want anyone to be lost here this morning, so uh, why, don't we just, why don't we just read those verses again from verse 20. It says, So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel, and Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks, and let them choose one bullock for themselves, and cut it in pieces, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under, and I will dress the other bullock, and lay it on wood, and put no fire under. And call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord, and the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. For those of you who might be unfamiliar with this, with this, uh, with what's going on here, this is, uh, we have two characters here that we're looking at, Elijah and Ahab. Elijah, a prophet of God and Ahab, king of Judah. And when Ahab became king of Judah, 
what he did was that he took the people back into worshipping idols, in particular Baal. And it was quite a, a very gory, a very disgusting uh, religious practice of that time. And Ahab, he got the people of God to be able to go, to turn them away from God. You see, this was a people, this is the children of God. These are the people of the tribe of Judah, God's people. These are the, these are the people, the descendants of those who God passed, allowed to pass through the Red Sea. These are those that he took into the promised land. This is, this is, the, this is the people who, uh, uh, who God gave uh, King David unto to be able to show them the right way. And uh, these are the, this is the same people. However, King Ahab, we see here he's, what he's done is that he's taken the people, he's, he started this religious practice uh, where these people have come along there and they're worshipping idols and doing all, all other sorts of very, very rotten and, and terrible things that uh, you know, I won't get into detail here this morning. But we see a man of God that stands up Completely coming out of nowhere, Elijah. You'll see that in, in, uh, in the previous chapter, in chapter 17, that uh, he was a Tishbite uh, of, the, of the people of Gid, the inhabitants of Gilead. And God, this is a man that God raised up to be able to bring the people, to be able to turn their hearts back to God Almighty. Lord knows we need men, more men of God to be able to stand up in this day and age. Amen. Amen. More men of God to be able to stand up in times of apostasy where the truth is being distorted and people are falling away from the truth. There is a need for men of God to be able to stand up in this day and age to be able to show our people the right way. And we see here God, he raises up Elijah. And Elijah, the word of God tells us that it came to pass that when Ahab saw him, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? Because you see the, the previous time that Elijah ran into him, Elijah gave him the word of God. He said, you listen here, mate. He said, God is going to... He said, you, we'll have a look here. So you know I'm not, you know I'm not making this up, okay? If you have a look at verse 17 of... of uh, uh, verse 1 of chapter 17, just the previous chapter, you'll see, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And that lasted, that lasted uh, anybody know how many, how many years that lasted for? That wasn't just six months or nine months. That lasted for, uh, for roughly about three, uh, uh, for three years, I'm sure. Three years that lasted. And Elijah, after three years, he appears back unto Ahab. And Ahab asks him the question. He says, are you the one? He says, are you the one that is troubling Israel? Elijah answers him and he says, I, I, I have not troubled Israel, but thou, 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 that's an old word meaning you. He said, you're the one, that troubled, you're the one that's troubling Israel. And thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel under Mount Carmel. You see, Elijah's putting out a challenge to him now. He's telling Ahab, he's saying, you listen here, mate. I've had enough of you and I want you to be able, I'm, I'm challenging you to a showdown. And he tells him to head up to Mount Carmel. And he tells him to bring the prophets of Baal. You listen how many prophets there are. There are 450. And not only the prophets of Baal, but you see the prophets of the, gro and, and the, prophets of the groves. 400. So there was 850 people there who were present representing Baal on Mount Car at Mount Carmel. Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel in verse 20, 20 of chapter 18. So he sent out a message to all the children of Israel. He told them to come along and gather the prophets together under Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And if there's anything for us to be able to focus on here this morning, it is exactly this, this very question or this statement from Elijah in verse 21. How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And normally, you know, when you ask somebody a hard question like that, you don't get a response, sure enough. We see then the people answered him not a word. How long halt ye between two opinions? 
If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. Surely after, th after three years of famine, the land is destitute. There's nothing left. People are, living, people are living tough. They're living rough. There's no hope. Yet after three years, the people are still worshipping Baal. They're still going down this path, worshipping idols, doing the bad things that are associated with, uh, with Baal worship. After three years, finally, Ahab... And the children of Israel are challenged by the man of God, Elijah, on Mount Carmel. And he asks a question to the people. He says to them, he says, listen, how long hold ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, then follow him. You see, we face this very, we're in this very dilemma this, in this very day and age. You see, there are people, there's mankind who are living in this world, living in this world, living in our communities, who are going down a path that is leading to destruction. A path that is leading to a destiny that is one without the Lord Jesus Christ. One that is lost. A destiny that will see them spending eternity in hell and damnation. You see, a lot of people, they don't like to preach about hell. But I tell you this now. Hell is real. But praise God, so is heaven. Amen. And God he is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Yet we see people out there that are going down this path, and I tell you, and, and I tell you what, sometimes we 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 are we, we're in we're in two worlds. We don't know. We sometimes we're caught up too much with things that do not matter, do not have an eternal value. We're too worried about uh, about what people might say. We're too worried about what people might think. We're worried about our, our pride and we're thinking about uh, who we are and how it might feel should we be rejected. But I'll tell you this now, <coughs> hell is real and people, let me tell you this now, it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment, Hebrews 9.27. And this is the path that people are going down in this day and age. However, God is looking for a man. He's looking for men and women of God who are going to stand up in times of apostasy. And let me tell you now, we are living in times where the truth is not only being distorted, but people are falling away from the truth. People are falling away from the truth. And God is looking for a man to be able to stand up for him in this time, in this day and age. Someone who's going to stand up. You see, Elijah, he was by himself. But a wise man once said that one plus God equals a majority. Let me tell you this now. When you've got God on your side, you're not alone. Amen. When you've got God on your side, you are not alone. And Elijah, although he was by himself and he had 850 representatives there for Baal standing on Mount Carmel, you see, he challenges them. He brings the people together. He brings the people along and he's got the prophets of Baal standing over here and Elijah standing there and the people are standing here and he says to them, he said, listen, he said, how long will you halt between two opinions? You see, these people, they knew about God. These people, these are the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. These are the people. These are God's people. God said to, said to the, the descendants of these people, he said, you are my people. You belong to me. And even in this day and age, we see God's people who are still halting between two opinions. Even in this very day, God's people are still halting between two opinions. Just like Elijah asks a question, and he makes a statement clearly after that. He says, if the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. The question here, or the statement I guess I want to make to you here this morning is, how long will you halt between two opinions? It's time for you to be able to make up your mind here this morning. It's time for you to make up your mind. You see, we as Christians, to the Christian first here this morning, okay? Because we, should, we, we know what's better, okay? We know what's best. We live, in a, we, live in this, we live in this country of Australia. The outside world looks at it and they say, this is, oh, that's a lucky country. That's a lucky country. I like to call it a blessed country. You look at many other places around the world, and I tell you this now, when you look at the situation or the, uh, the conditions that these other countries are in, truly we are blessed. 
we are blessed. However, in times of apostasy, just like in Elijah's time, it's hard to find Christians that are standing up for God. It's hard, for the, it's hard to see men and women of God to be able to stand up and to be able to be able to stand up for God, to be a shining light in a time of darkness. When people are falling away from the truth. Even back there in Kalgoorlie where I come from. It's hard to find men and women who belong to the Lord Jesus Christ who are going to stand up for him. You see, just like Paul said to Timothy in, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, uh, 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 verse, verse, uh, verse 3. Uh, ch- 2 Timothy chapter Chapter 3, verse 1, it says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Let me tell you this now. Perilous, we are living in perilous, t- perilous times. We are living in perilous times. And if you take a look through the next, uh, next three to four verses, or five verses, or you just go through that whole chapter, you will see that these things, that the Bible, that Paul is writing here to Timothy, we are seeing these, these events, we are seeing these, these same issues, or these things that are raised in the Bible, we are seeing them... Fold out right before our very eyes. Look there in verse 2. It says, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Can we see that today? Amen? Amen. Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Verse 3, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, and the list goes on and on. We are living in times of apostasy. However, Paul, he encourages Timothy, and I want to encourage you here this morning as well, to the Christians here this morning. He says, I charge thee in chapter 4, verse 1, Therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned under fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. What you see there is doing words, verbs, okay? It tells us there in verse 5, it tells us to watch. Watch, in all th- watch thou in all things, endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist and make full proof of thy ministry. You see, you and I, for us to be able to make some sort of impact, we too have got to be, we have got to be able to adopt a verb-like attitude. We have to be a people of action. Just like the verbs we see there, to watch, to endure, to do the work, to make full proof of thy ministry. A verb is a doing word. You and I, it's no good us just sitting down here in church. We've been saved to serve, not saved to sit down in churches. And it's up to us, you and I, to be able to go out there just like a doing, just like a verb, a doing word. We've got to go out there and we've got to do the work for the Lord, what God has commissioned us. You see, you and I, we've been charged, okay? Not charged in the sense with a crime, but we've been charged in the military sense. You and I, we've been commissioned to go out there and to be able to do the work that God has commissioned us to do. You and I, we are soldiers. God, didn't get a, God did, not, uh, did not give us, he didn't give us the, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, uh, that, that thing that they give you? Um, uh, we don't have any water out in, out in Kalgoorlie or oceans or stuff, but when you're drowning, they give you this, that, uh, that, the, the life, life-saving ring, all right? God, he didn't give that to us. What he gave to us was an armor, because you and I are soldiers, amen? amen. He, gave us sol- he, he, he gave us armor, because you and I, we've got to go out there and we've got to fight a good fight. We've got to go out there and we've got to do the work that God has charged us with. His word has charged us with. What you see there are verbs which are doing words. You and I, we've got to be doing Christians, not just talking Christians. Amen? Amen. We've got to go out there and do the work. You might say, well, look, I'm I'm not really, uh, you know, I, I might be too old or I might be too young. Or I'm not really sure where I fit in here. Let me tell you this now. There is a place for you here in this church. There's something for you to do in this church. Let me encourage you. Let's be doing Christians, amen? Not just talking Christians. Not just sit down Christians. But get up and go on and doing Christians, amen? Amen. 
We've got a work out there to do. How are they going to hear without a preacher? How are the people going to know the way unless you and I go out there and we go and tell them? How are your friends, how are your family, how are your cousins, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties and uncle? Surely there's someone in your family that does not know Jesus Christ. And if they have not come to know Christ as their saviour, then let me tell you this now. It's up to you and I to be able to go out there and tell them about the Lord Jesus. And, the, and, and God's saving grace that is only found in his son. There's no name under heaven given amongst men whereby we can be saved except the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Let me tell you that now. It is the Lord Jesus Christ that saves. And when we consider the fact that there are people who are dying, you see, back in my community, back in Kalgoorlie, Boulder, last year or the year prior, we had 14 weeks consecutively where we had a death. We were burying one or two more people. Because our, because our, 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 our health outcomes are so... Are so, uh, are so uh, um, we're at, a, we're, at a, we're at a disadvantage. Aboriginal people, you see, we're more likely to die at, at, a, at, a, at a much faster and an earlier rate than non-Aboriginal people. There's a ministry, amen? amen? We've got young people out here. We've got young people who are, who are committing suicide because they can't see no hope. The thing is, the world can't give them hope. The only hope in this world is the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is where they're going to find it. But how are they going to know if someone don't go out and tell them? We need to be doing Christians. Amen. Not only that, but we're living in times where our children, our children, these young people that we see here, some of, them, some of which is sitting down here with us right now, many have gone out and so much more that are outside there. I love that, that I love that, that sign as you walk out there. You are now entering the mission field. That's true. That's a mission field out there. That's a mission field. We've got young people out there who are, who are, who, who are falling prey to drugs. Young people growing up in broken homes. The threat, the, 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 uh, the, the peer pressure that they face to be able to conform and to be like the world. What they need is Christians, you and I, to be able to go out there and to be able to train them up in the way that they should go. Proverbs 22, 6. Train a child up in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. That's a promise that God gives to us. You see, what we do for the Lord Jesus Christ, it's, it's going to last, amen? You see, you and I, we might, we might not get rewarded here. You might, not, you might not receive an award or recognition you know, for, for what you do for the Lord Jesus Christ. Man not, might not bring you up here. Uh, definitely, Pastor, uh, Pastor Bill, I've known him for a very long time. My family has been associated with him since the, uh, since the 80s, I think, or since the early 80s. And thank God he's done a wonderful work. And I'm sure there's many more of you here in this church that have been laboring and, and striving and working, doing the work for the Lord Jesus Christ. No man might stand you up and say, here you go, brother, here's an award. But praise God, God will give us a reward one day. God will reward us. But our children, our next generation, you see, these children, these young people here, they are important. You see, they're the lifeline to the ministry. And if we do not train them up in the way that they should go, then I'll tell you this now, this ministry, the church that we are in, the church that I am in, the churches around here now, if we do not invest Jesus Christ into the life of our young people, then the ministry will die with us. It dies with us. It doesn't go anywhere else. Which is why you and I, we need to invest the Lord Jesus Christ in the lives of these young men and these young women that are here the young children that are out there. And not only these ones here, but there's so much more. There's so many more young people that are out there. How long are we going to halt? How long are we going to halt? You see, that word, it comes from an old Hebrew word, which means, you see, they, 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 they wanted bow for one minute and then they'd come back to God, you see. You and I, we can't, where God is concerned, you can't have your cake and eat it too. All right? Where sin is, sorry, where sin is concerned. You've got to be serving God and I'll tell, you this not, I'll tell you this now, if you aren't serving God, then I'll tell you this now, you, how can, you, how can we call ourselves Christians? 
Where sin is concerned, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't halt between two opinions. You can't wake up one morning and say, yes, I'm going to serve the Lord Jesus. Uh, or yes, you know, this, uh, today it's okay. You know, I'm going to uh, look. Um, uh, youth ministry is very, it's, it's very tiring. It, 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 it can drain you. But we can't afford, especially with the times that our young people are living in now, we can't afford to say, okay, I'm going to get up and I'm going to, you know, uh, I'm going to help pastor today and uh, uh, come, come next week. Oh, look, I'm a bit too tired, you know. I'm not going to, I'm going to take a rest, you know. Uh, yeah, you know, those kids, you know, they can really drain you. You and I, we can't hold between two opinions. If we're in the service for God, it's got to be all or nothing. It's got to be all or nothing. Not only are there drugs and alcohol and suicide that our young people are facing, but let me tell you this now, they have been indoctrinated with a very evil, this evil concept of, 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 that, is, that is from the devil himself, that it's all right for a boy to love another boy and a girl to love another girl. They are being told, I'm going to say it one more time, that it's all right for a boy to love a boy and a girl to love a girl. Let me tell you this now, that is evil, and I tell you what, that comes from the pits of hell, from Satan himself. Amen. Yet we can't choose, we can't take a position where we'll say, oh, it's all right, no, no, look, um, I don't want to offend anyone today, no, no, no. And uh, then we come to church and we'd say, yeah, that's all right. That's Wrong. Homosexuality is wrong. I don't believe no, that's wrong. Then we come across a view. <laughs> no, no, better not. This is my family. This is my friends. Oh, I work in this place. Uh, oh, I shop there. Or oh, I do this. No. We can't. We can't halt between two opinions. We can't halt between two opinions. These young people here. We need to give them the Lord Jesus Christ. It's got to be Jesus or nothing at all. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Not only that, but there might be some of you who come here this morning. There might be one or two of you. I don't, I don't know. I don't know your situation. I don't know, where, I don't know where you stand with Christ here this morning. You may have heard the message before. You may have grown up in a Christian home. You may have, you may have grown up in a community. You see, I, I, I grew up in a community. Uh, it used to be a mission. It was called Mount Margaret. It's in Western Australia, northeast out of Kalgoorlie, about 300, about 300K. We had a lot of, lot of Christians come here, come out of that. A lot of men of God over the years, families live for the Lord Jesus Christ. You look at it now, almost 100 years later, and you'd think it's just another Aboriginal community. However, we've got people who, who come out from this community and they say, oh, no, I know about God. You know, I, I, you know, I grew up in the mission. Not only that, but I've got friends who I went to school with, Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal alike in Perth. Went to a Christian school. I ran into some of them. I said, oh, you still going to church? Oh, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's sort of, <laughs> are you serious, you know? You may have heard the gospel message before. You may have grown up in a Christian home, but you've never made a decision. Let me tell you this now, here this morning, you can't hold between two opinions. There's no, there's no, middle, there's no middle ground. Either you're saved or you're not saved. Either you're going to heaven or you're going to hell. You either got Jesus, you're either a child of God or you're a child of the devil. And it's a reality. I can't, I can't, sugar, I can't sugarcoat it for you. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, let me tell you this now. And I say this, I say this with much sadness. I don't say this with any, with any pride or, 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 or uh, this, this is not a guilt trip. This is not to make you feel, this is not to make you squirm in your seat or make you feel uncomfortable. Let me tell you this now, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your saviour, 
you, you will spend eternity in hell. You see, God sent his son to come and give his life on the cross of Calvary for us so that we might live forever with him in heaven. You see, you might have heard this message before. You might have had an invitation given to you before. You might have had people, you might have had a, heard, heard an old preacher maybe, maybe 20 years ago tell you this message. You may have heard the pastor preach this last week. You're halting between two opinions. Whether to ask Jesus Christ to come into your life and to be your Lord and Saviour or to continue to say, no, nah, maybe, maybe next time, maybe next week. Let me tell you this now, I'll say it once again. It is appointed unto man once to die after this judgment. The Bible describes our life like a vapour. You ever see a kettle boil or a billy can boil on the fire? I get a, and my, my family, we get billy can. We boil it, boil it out in the bush when we go out bush for a kangaroo and emu. When we boil that billy, when we boil that billy you see the steam rising off, the vapours coming off from the top, and it's there and it disappears. The Bible describes our life just like that. We can be here. We're here one minute, we can be gone the next. How long will you halt between two opinions? To the unsaved here this morning, if you've heard this message here and you have, you've, never, you've never considered asking Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Saviour, I ask you here this morning, don't, I encourage you here this morning, don't hold between two opinions. If God be God, then you follow him. If God is God, you ask him to come into your life. And let me tell you this now, I thank God that he saved me. Nothing good about me, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. I thank God that someone showed me they showed me in the word of God, they showed me that, hang on, you need a saviour. For there is none righteous, no, not one. Not only that, but wages of sin is death. The payment, the wage of sin, you sin, you're going to get back death. Thank God, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We can't keep, we can't keep sitting on the fence. We can't keep halting between, we can't be undecided. We've got to make it, you've got to make a decision today. You see, I was at Bush. I was at Bush with a, with a young man who I went to school with. His mother's a Christian lady. She was serving God. He sadly fell away from the Lord. He's sitting down. We're sitting around the fire at Bush. We went and killed a kangaroo and a, and a goanna, lizard about that big. We, got a, we, call it, we got our own names for it, you know, and we call that lizard a yelba and a kangaroo a marlo. So we're sitting down there and we're cooking this kangaroo in the ground and got this emu on the ground cooking and this, this cousin of mine, he's sitting down and he's got the cigarette and he's staring into the fire and he's got the cigarette and he lights it up and he, he said, you know what brother, I've got to give this up. I turned and I listened to him. He's looking at me, he said, I've got to give this cigarette up. looks back at the fire, he's sitting down. Then he says, but you know what, in God's time, hey, I've got to do it in God's time. I'll do it in God's time. God knows when it's best, okay? And I sat down there, and you know what, I looked at him and I said, you know what, my brother? I said, I can tell you when God's time is. And he looked at me. Like I was, you know, prophet or something, you know. <laughs> He looked at me and he said, you know God's time. I said, I said yeah, I, said, I can tell you God's time. He said, yeah, I've I got to give this up in God's time. I said, yeah, yeah. I said, I can tell you exactly when God's time is. And I quoted this verse of scripture to him, which you most probably are familiar with. I'm going to read it so you know I'm not making it up. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, it says, For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. 
Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. I said, you want to know when you've got to give that up, brother? I said, you've got to give that up now. I said, you can't halt between two opinions. I said, you can't continue to sit down on the fence and say, all right, I'll have God one day and then I'll have the devil this other day. Other day. I'm going to live like, I'm going to live like, I'm going to be an angel today and I'm going to live like a devil today. I'm going to go to church because it makes me feel good, but uh, I feel good at home next sat Sunday, so I'm going to sit down at home. I said, you can't afford to do that, man. I said, you want to know when the accepted time is? You want to know when the day of salvation is? The Bible says it is right now. You've got to give that cigarette up right now. I said, you can't afford to keep, keep halting or keep jumping back from one to the, from, from God and the devil to the next. I said, if you're gonna if you're gonna serve God, I said, you gotta chuck that away. And I said, you get your life right with God and you follow Him. Just like Elijah encouraged the people, he said, if God be God, then follow Him. Let me tell you this now, for those of you who might be here this morning, you you may be sitting on the fence, you may be you may be halting between two opinions, whether or not to give your life over to Jesus Christ, whether or not to serve Him, whether or not to go and do something for the Lord Jesus Christ. To ask him to come into my life and to be my saviour. Lord, I'm a sinner and, and, and I'm lost without you. I need you, Lord Jesus. Come into my life and, and save me and be the king of my life. You might be struggling with that here this morning. Let me tell you this now. The time when you're going to do that is now. God's word is encouraging you to do it now. Do it today. Don't muck around with it. Because it is appointed unto man once to die. Or woman wants to die. But after this, the judgment. Let me encourage you. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, now is the day of salvation. Let me encourage you. Now is the day of salvation. Jesus Christ, he wants to save you now. And just like that lovely old song we, we sing, um, only trust him, only trust him, only trust him now. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you now. Nothing else can save you. Nothing else can fill the void that is, in, that is inside your life right now. Nothing else can give you peace in this world except the Prince of Peace. Nothing else can give you hope in this hopeless world except for the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me encourage you here this morning. Don't halt between two opinions. If God is God... Make him your saviour today. Make Jesus Christ your saviour today. Serve him now. Only trust him now. He will save you now. Jesus Christ, he's mighty to save. You might be sitting down thinking, well, I'm just too, I'm too bad. I'm no good. How could Jesus save me? Let me tell you this now. He saves, <coughs> he saves from the uttermost to the guttermost. Let me explain that to you. You can be the richest man in the world and think you're good. Let me tell you this now. That rich man still needs a saviour. You might be a poor person sitting down in the streets without a home or something to eat. And Jesus Christ, this person still needs a saviour. Let me tell you this now. This person is not too lowly that God can't save him. And this person up here is not too high that God can't save him. Jesus Christ can save you now. You make Christ your saviour. You, please, I ask that you really consider that here this morning. Don't hold between two opinions. If God is God, you follow him and you make him your saviour today. God bless you all.